full of courage and inspiration. Stories of the Underground Railroad are rich and deep in Maryland. Here, more people successfully risk their lives to gain freedom from bondage than from any other state. Home to a large free black population, the enslaved and sympathetic whites, a hotbed of Underground Railroad support grew and many of the nation's best known Underground Railroad leaders emerged. Being close to the border with the free North made the journey shorter, while Maryland's Chesapeake Bay and its rivers and landscapes created advantages for those who courageously raced for liberty. The National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom, created by the National Park Service, explores places and people who shape the journey to freedom. Discover the heroic stories of daring men, women, and children as we travel through some of Maryland's Network to Freedom sites and experience why Maryland is the epicenter of powerful underground railroad storytelling destinations. Come to places where people escaped, learn their stories of fighting for freedom, and discover who helped them flee from those determined to stop them. Like many others before him, an enslaved man named James Curry used the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal as a means of flight. The canal's towpath, a highway in its day, took travelers within miles of the Pennsylvania border and freedom. Some used the canal for employment, posing as free day workers to earn wages, using the money to escape northward. Today, the nearly 200-mile-long trail is a recreational escape for hiking and biking, running from Georgetown in Washington, D.C. to Cumberland, Maryland. During the 18th century, enslaved workers labored alongside paid men at the Catoctin Iron Furnace. Iron produced here supplied cannonballs during the Revolutionary War and also was used to make the hull of the famous Civil War ironclad vessel, the Monitor. In 1780, Phil, a 25-year-old enslaved man, fled from the Johnson brothers who owned the furnace. At Woodlawn Manor Cultural Park, take a walk through the woods on the Underground Railroad experience in Maryland, where visitors learn the various ways that fleeing slaves eluded capture. This former Quaker plantation features a three-story stone barn from 1832, converted into a museum, with exhibits on the Underground Railroad activity in the area and the Quaker experience. An enslaved man named Josiah Henson, who later went on to become a famous abolitionist and minister, once worked on this former plantation, laboring for the Riley family. The land is now known as Josiah Henson Park. Henson's experiences inspired Harriet Beecher Stowe's famous novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. And Abraham Lincoln believed that this best-selling novel sparked the fire leading to the Civil War. Archaeological work is still taking place at this home in search of artifacts. Hampton National Historic Site immerses you in the history of the lives of the enslaved near Baltimore. At this 1790 Georgian mansion, work was both industrial and agricultural. Enslaved people and indentured servants worked long days harvesting and shipping tons of grain, iron, and timber for ships bound for Europe. Their strenuous labor provided a lavish lifestyle for the owners and led to 100 people escaping their bondage from Hampton and its iron works. President Street Station is the oldest surviving railroad station in an urban setting and home to the Baltimore Civil War Museum. Enslaved people sometimes escape by train, such as Frederick Douglass, who departed from Baltimore disguised as a sailor. Another man, Henry Box Brown, shipped himself to freedom through this station in a wooden crate. At Soderley Plantation, generations of families became wealthy in the business of tobacco, lumber, and livestock, 
through the labor of enslaved people. An original slave cabin still stands here, and the property includes exhibits about life, work, and escapes. Remarkably, 49 enslaved people fled this plantation during the War of 1812. Before the time of GPS devices, freedom seekers navigated using the stars, landscape, and waterways for passage on the Underground Railroad. At the Atkins Arboretum, a self-guided audio tour based on slave narratives tells the little-known story of how Maryland's natural environment influenced the challenge, success, and failure of escapes. Freedom seekers navigated through places like this, finding food and shelter along the way. You can also be inspired by the Underground Railroad's most famous figure at the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Visitor Center. Here, you can explore Tubman's life in slavery and escape, her rescue missions, and secret networks to freedom. Learn about Tubman's actions during the Civil War and later years as a suffragist, civil rights worker, and humanitarian. And on the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Byway, an audio guide brings stories to life along a scenic drive that highlights three dozen sites, such as the Dorchester County Courthouse, Bucktown Store, Brodus Farm, and the Denton Steamboat Wharf on the Chop Tank River. These were the settings of bold and dangerous activities of people like Harriet Tubman and other Underground Railroad agents and freedom seekers, and where slave catchers captured fugitives. It has been estimated that for decades in the early to mid-1800s, as many as 1,000 enslaved people a year nationwide fled to freedom. This harrowing journey was sometimes successful, but often not. The Network to Freedom documents, preserves, and commemorates the stories, places, and historical significance of this time in American history for generations today and in the future. For more information and to fully discover these stories and sites in Maryland, the most powerful underground railroad storytelling destination in the world, explore visitmaryland.org. <laughs>